Hi everyone, in today's video I am going to talk about shame and more specifically how to stop having sexual shame. So this video is for you if you've been struggling with your sexuality, if just the thought of being naked in front of somebody else brings up a lot of anxiety, maybe some shame and sweaty palms, if you feel like it is just holding you back and you are not living up to your full sexual potential, then Keep watching because I'm going to give you some tools and tips to finally ditch the sexual shame from your life. I am Céline Rémy, the Intimacy Angel, and I am here to help you bring your sexy back in life. So let's take a look at shame and guilt. I'm going to talk about Brené Brown. Brené Brown is an author and researcher who has done extensive studying around shame and guilt. And what she has found is that shame is focused on the self. So shame is kind of like, I am bad. Guilt, on the other hand, is more focused on the behavior. So it's more like, I did something bad. So I wanted to share that because it's a very important distinction. When people use shame and guilt, sometimes interchangeably, they are actually quite different. So understand that the shame, usually it's about your own perception of your own self, that there's something inherently wrong with you, while guilt is more about something that you're doing a behavior. When it comes to sexual shame, it's most of the time something that you've learned. You've learned through programming, conditioning, being around people because we are all born naked. Being naked and sexuality is something that's natural, healing, beautiful and normal. Then comes in all the conditioning and programming, whether it's your parents, whether it's a religion or any organizations that you're part of, where people put on messages saying like, oh, there's something wrong with you, or you can't do this, can't do that. So these are all um, experiences and behaviors that we've learned, which means that we can unlearn them, which is important to understand that. Now, it might feel overwhelming to want to go from like being totally free in your body, uh, like if you are feeling so much more constricted and a lot of shame. So it's important to take baby steps when it comes to reclaiming your body and your sexuality. Now I want to make a distinction to that nakedness and sexuality are not the same. Being naked is natural, is just a way of being and being naked doesn't always equate to being sexual. So we need to separate the two because people tend to like put them together and that creates a lot of issues too because being naked doesn't mean that you're being sexual, you are just being naked. So the first thing you want to do is you want to start to reverse your focus on where you're looking at. Most people, when they are feeling a lot of shame, they keep rehearsing the scenarios of the um, ideas in their head about why they're bad or why something's wrong with them. So you want to start to flip the coin and start to look at pleasure and things that feel good about yourself, about your body. Maybe you can even start to bring some appreciation, things that you love about yourself, things that you appreciate about yourself, things that you love about your body. When you start to flip the coin and start to focus on the pleasure, whatever you put your focus focus and your energy on starts to expand. So we want to expand the amount of pleasure that you feel in your life. You want to give yourself permission to feel good, to feel pleasure. So you want to address underlying emotional issues that could be in the way where you feel like maybe you're not worthy of pleasure. One of my favorite tool is EFT, which stands for Emotional Freedom Technique, which is about tapping to start to shift your subconscious like ideas and patterns in your head so that you can start to make bigger changes in your life. So you want to address those underlying causes, especially if it's related to your worthiness. And then you also want to start to 
connect with your partner differently. So if you are in a relationship, find ways like start to turn on the light so you can see each other. Keep your, keep your eyes open. Look into each other's eyes. That might be really scary and connect. Don't talk five, 10 minutes, talk like looking at each other's eyes, being with each other and just like feeling what it feels like to be fully seen and fully appreciated. You can also look at each other like spreading your legs open and having your partner look at your body and sharing what they love or what they see, what they appreciate about you. This is about creating a container within your relationship, a sanctuary in your bedroom where it's safe to be seen, to be fully who you are. Remember that no matter how kinky you are, there is always somebody out there who loves, or who will love what you love. So you also need to surround yourself with people who like what you like. So maybe find teachers, groups, um, meetups, places where people embrace their sexuality and feel comfortable in the body. You want to have good role models about that. And you want to start talking about things, even if they feel awkward or weird, even if you're blushing. Talking about stuff will help you to process things. And especially you might want to talk about scenarios, sexual things that you may want to try, just to help to bring out the, uh, that shame out. You know, whatever you bring into the light is gonna, not going to stay in that darkness and that shameful space. You're going to bring it into the light and love it fully. Realize that you are not alone and that being naked and being is absolutely natural. Sexuality is beautiful, is healing, is also natural. And you need to create a sacred container within yourself and then with your partner. So it always starts with you first. So go in front of the mirror, look into your own eyes, appreciate your body, take the time to know what you love and what you like and be okay with just liking being sexual and do the work with letting go of the subconscious things using tools like EFT or even tools like Ohoponopono where you use um, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I thank you and I love you. Using forgiveness just to move through that process so that shame can no longer hold you back. Create a clear picture of what you would look like if you didn't have shame. And every day when you are faced with a decision of taking one step towards that person that you want to be, that who is totally embodied in, in your pleasure and shame-free or staying small in the shame, make the decision to take one step, one little step towards that new person you know deep down that you are all right i hope today's video was helpful thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video